Uh, I'm going to talk about Japanese uh, end life care. Uh, anyway, let's begin. Uh, yeah. Oops. In the the population aging rate in Japan, oh, those uh, over 65 years old was seven percent in 1970. 14% in 1994, and uh, reached 21% considered a super-aged society in 2010. So we can see it has been steadily uh, increasing. According to the latest statistics of the Ministry of Health and Welfare, it reached 27.3% in 2016. Also. Uh, the current average life expectancy is uh, almost 81 years for males and 87 years for females. It is estimated in uh, 2065 to become over 85 years for males and 91 years for females. Uh, this data obviously reflects the increase in the number of people dying. Uh, 1. Million, uh, 1. 1.3 million in 2017, and expected to reach about, uh, reach about uh, 1.7 million by uh, 2040. According to a recent survey of people over 55 years of age, when asked, where do you want to spend your last days? The answer, 54.6% of people said their own homes, 27.7% in medical facilities, and 8.6% uh, in nursing homes and uh, welfare facilities. But the reality is very different. 76.6% of people died in medical facilities, while only 12.7% uh, in their homes and 10.1% in nursing homes and or welfare facilities. The large majority of people died in medical facilities, not their homes. So we can see the challenge for end-of-life care is an urgent issue. My major part of my presentation will be looking at the revised uh, 2018 guidelines about passive euthanasia. But first, in giving an overview of end life care in Japan, I will refer to three common areas of focus in comparative studies on this subject, active euthanasia, passive euthanasia, and physician-assisted suicide. Yeah. There are one this uh, district court case in 1995 that outlined the requirements for euthanasia. The court referred to active euthanasia as well as a primary issue, passive euthanasia. Although whether or not the section about active euthanasia in the decision should be uh, interpreted uh, as the reason for deciding, and was somewhat controversial. The decision provided the following requirements. Uh, an, an, an endurable physical pain, irreversible and terminal condition, no alternative for easing pain except through active euthanasia, and, and explicit intention of a patient, not a presumed one. After the 1995 course decision, some drafts for statute on end life, life care were proposed but didn't pass due to a lack of consensus. But physicians uh, continually face and deal with end life care in their day-to-day -day practices. In, in the early 2000s, the Ministry of Health and Welfare considered a so-called soft law or guidelines instead of a hard law or statute. In 2007, it provided the first guidelines on end life care. In March 2018, the Ministry of 
health and welfare pro uh, revised these guidelines on the ground that over the course of the past decade, uh, issues concerning end life care have involved not only medical professionals, but also providers of care uh, who work in uh, nursing homes. So it had uh, become necessary to include the concept of advanced care planning in the decision-making process. Uh, the principles of the end life care, there are four main principles of end life care. One, it is primary concept that principal, principals who are adequately informed by medical and healthcare professionals about their end life care should make their own decisions and receive care on the basis of their decisions. Also, it is important that because over time, the, the intentional principles may involve. They should constantly discuss such end life care with their team-based health prof, uh, healthcare professionals so they are able to express or communicate their intention at each stage. Moreover, it is important that principals also constantly discuss their intention with trusted persons such as family members. Should the uh, principals be in capable of expressing it when needed. It is also important that they appoint a specific person to presume their intention in advance. Two, medical and nursing professionals can make as, uh, assessments about the medical validity of the commencement withholding, modification, or discontinuation of end life care. Three, team-based medical nursing and Caregiving professionals shall provide palliative, palliative care for pro principals for also offer comprehensive care, including mental and social support. And four, this guideline is not subject to active euthanasia. The uh, decision making procedure in end life care, depending on the whether intention is confirmed or not. Number one, when the intention of principles can be confirmed, A, it is prerequisite in deciding on the course of treatment or care that principles are fully informed by medical professionals. On this basis, pr uh, principles make medical decisions based upon uh, discussion with medical professionals reaching a consensus on treatment. B. The intention of the principles may change over the passage of time due to a change in physical and mental condition or updating medical assessment. In view of this situation, team-based professionals must constantly provide uh, comprehensive care in order to en enable principals to best express their intention after consideration of information and explanation. Moreover, in preparation for the prospective incapacity of principals, it is necessary for them to discuss and work care with their families. C, uh, the contents of their intention in these processes should be made in writing. Number two, when the intention of principals cannot be confirmed, it is necessary for team-based professionals to make a decision on the end life care of principals and in accordance with the following procedures. A, when someone such as a family member can presume the intention of principal, professionals should respect this presumed intention and decide it on the best course of care. B, when no one can presume intention, pr intention pre professionals should dis uh, discuss it with substitute such as a family and decide on the best course of care. The healthcare professionals should continue discuss uh, over time should a change in physical and mental conditions merit modification of the medical assessment. C. When the principal has no family or the family leaves the decision making up to team-based care professionals, their professionals may decide the co uh, best course of action. And D, the context of the discussion in these processes should be made in writing. And finally, number three, settlement by an ad hoc committee to further discussion among healthcare professionals among with other professionals and specialists. 
in determining the course of care in the situation discussed above. When someone such as a family member can presume the intention of the principal, the pre uh, professional respects the presumed intention and decide on the best course of care. When the principal cannot achieve a consensus with the professionals on end-life care, or when the substitute cannot achieve consensus with the uh, professionals on end-life care, then it is necessary for an ad hoc committee to facilitate further discussions by adding other professionals and specialists. And finally, with the entire committee examining the course of care and offering direction. Yeah. Currently, uh, these are, there are no code decisions or relevant guidelines about physician assisted suicide. But it is, might be possible to hypothesize about it. In the 1995 court decision, the physician who practiced active euthanasia wouldn't have been found guilty of homicide under the requirements. But it was also considered that active euthanasia should only be used as a last resort in medical treatment. In other words, a physician could assist in suicide with the administration of medical procedures, but never did. By extension of this thinking, uh, in the future, a physician who assists in the suicide of a patient probably wouldn't uh, be found guilty of homicide under certain conditions. Conceivable conditions uh, would be the following. An endurable physical pain, irreversible and terminal condition, explicit intention of a patient, not presumed intention. Also, it is uncertain whether the measures that a physician could adopt are limited to writing a prescription or include administering a drug. It will, be, uh, it will become an important aspect of uh, the end of issue in the year to come. In summation, uh, concerning active euthanasia, uh, although there have been court order requirements, no one has tested it about, uh, because of lack of uh, being found guilty as uh, uh, there would have being a lack of a legal immunity. For the same reason, no doctor would attempt a physician-assisted suicide. The guidelines uh, concerning end of life care are becoming more relevant for medical facilities, uh, nursing homes and the welfare facilities. For example, some core hospitals adopt these guidelines, while others provide their own guidelines to follow and expanded them to include advanced planning for end life care. I hope that these guidelines served as an opportunity to establish good relationship among medical and caregiving professionals and their patients. Uh, thank you for your attention. Toda, uh, Laba. And uh, let me just say, one more thing. <laughs> Welcome to Japan. At, uh, uh, in coming years, we will have next conference in uh, Tokyo. Yeah, unfortunately, in August, hot summer, no cherry blossom, no snowy mountains, but uh, please come to Japan. Thank you so much, Todaraba.